Okay, so we have our counter information that we've been able to discover using get counter. Now the one drawback to this is that that counter information isn't always displayed in a way that's easy to work with. So for example, if we look at get counter and let's look at the counter memory backslash available bytes. That's going to display for us the amount of memory that we have available, but it displays it in bytes. And we're not used to looking at bytes. We're used to looking at megabytes or uh, gigabytes or something like that. And so we look at that number, 32117473328, and we think, all right, can we do this in a simpler way? All right, let's talk about how we can get there. So I'm going to hit my up arrow to uh, replicate my previous command. I'm going to pipe the output put of that too. Now you'll notice this is under uh, counter samples. So I'm going to pipe that to select object and then I'm going to expand property counter samples. And that's going to expand that property and you'll see that we have here the whole path, the instance name, which doesn't really matter because memory is a single instance. And then we call it the cooked value. That now in some of them you're going to see a cooked value and a raw value. And the cooked value would be if the uh, system does any manipulation to the raw value before it outputs it. Like, for example, turning it into megabytes or gigabytes. But it doesn't do that here. So this shows us, it actually breaks this down for us. Breaks down this counter samples thing down for us into individual components. Now if we pipe that to format list and let's do asterisk to display all of them, we'll see all of the uh, all of the properties of that particular object. So we have the path, the instance name, the cooked value, the raw value, the second value, the multiple count, timestamp, and you get the idea. Okay, so this gives us all of the values that we can actually work with. Now, let's say I wanted just this value. So then what I would do is I would pipe it to select object again because interestingly enough is select object you know you have a prop the properties you use so or you have an object you select object to select specific properties well for this one it actually returns an object that has an object as one of its properties so when we expand object counter samples that's actually another object and now we're going to select object to do the same thing we're going to expand property and I want the cooked value and that'll give us just that particular value now if I don't do the expand I can do just select object and then I can specify what I want so I can do things like timestamp comma cooked value and it'll show me in a nice little table the timestamp and the cooked value but if I want to expand just that value so I can convert it into megabytes or gigabytes, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do the expand property. Expand property cooked value. And that's going to show me just that particular value. Okay, now I can take that and I can convert that to... Uh, megabytes. And the way we do that is we divide it by a pre-built standard of one megabyte. So it'd be divided by one megabyte. Now that's actually not going to work for us because it doesn't know what to do with this. It thinks this is all part of get counter. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way back over here to my get counter and I'm going to put my entire get counter in parentheses. And then I'm going to divide that by, let me get my divide sign going the right way, divide it by one megabyte. And that's going to tell me that I have 3,000 megabytes. If I want to see it in gigabytes, I divide it by one gigabyte. And that'll display it for me in megabytes and gigabytes. Now, it's 2.9914016. All right, what if I want to shorten that? 
where we have an option in PowerShell to perform math on some of our operations, which we kind of just did here with our divided by one megabyte or one gigabyte. But we have another subset that will allow us to round things off. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to hit my up arrow again, then I'm going to come all the way back over here to the beginning. Now you'll notice I've been building this one piece at a time rather than trying to type the whole thing up off the top of my head. That's a really good approach to take when you're doing this. So we do square uh, brackets, math, and then double quotation marks. And that says we're using a math function. And the math function we're using is called round. And then I'm going to open parentheses. And that's going to pull up my math function, round. And the first thing is going to be the value I want it to round, which is where I have my get counter and all the operations I just did, comma, and the number of decimal points I want it to round off to, which is in this case is going to be 2 close parentheses to close our parentheses over here by the round and hit enter and that tells me that I am using 2.99 gigabytes of data or available bytes I have 2.99 gigabytes free all right so using all of those techniques the ex uh, select object expand property I'm able to pull out specific values Using the math functions, I'm able to display them in megabytes, gigabytes, or whatever, or round it off to a specific value. So now that I have that, I can use that to display information a little bit more usably sometimes. So I could do something like this. Go all the way back here to the beginning again. Hold down my arrow key to get there. Dollar sign, free mem equals and then that will capture that and put that in the freemium variable and so then I could do write host the system currently has dollar sign free mem gigabytes of free memory. And then it will display the system currently has 2.99 gigabytes of free memory. Now obviously this here is something that I would do in a script, right? So if I was running a writing a script that would capture the amount of memory in gigabytes, uh, that's the way I would do it. Um, if I wanted to display it in that format, I would do my calculation, capture it in a variable, display it in a nice little the system currently has, blah, blah. All right, so that's how we can take information from one of those performance counters, extract it, format it, and display it in a way that can be more easily read and understood by the user.